Hello, my name is Ian, and welcome to another D&D video. Today we're going to be doing something... different. Now I'm a and d player, but first and foremost I'm a writer, and nothing gives me greater satisfaction while I play than creating rich, memorable characters that become icons of my group. One of my favorite types to play is the morally ambiguous hero. So today, I'm hoping to share some tips on how I've played the sort of character in the past, and what strategies you can employ both in and out of game to create your own morally ambiguous character. Tip 1. Don't create a hostile environment. By definition, gray characters are going to create a degree of conflict within the party, and a lot of what I'm going to say could be misapplied to create a game that's not fun to play. You're trying to create a compelling, morally ambiguous character. You're not trying to be a morally ambiguous player. Apply these tips judiciously, and always be aware of the other players. Make sure that they're having fun, and that your character is adding to it. Tip 2. Understand your character's motives. So we're starting basic here. And yes, understanding motives is an important part of creating any character. But it's especially important when you're hoping to create one that's truly ambiguous. The first thing to know when making a gray character is that it's a fine line to walk. Do too much good and you're a flawed hero. Do too much bad and the other characters will write you off as just another villain. You want to stay in that narrow zone where the other players can't quite define you, but you need to do it without breaking character. Having an intimate understanding of your character's motives will help you to figure out exactly what your character would and wouldn't do, and knowing those limits is important. Tip 3. Do not deal in absolutes. Humans like to categorize things, and that includes heroes and villains, so when a person is presented with a character that fits neither box, it's going to grab their attention, and they will stay invested until they feel as if they can properly categorize it. Your goal is to not be categorized. It will feel unnatural at first, but one of the best ways to avoid categorization is to deny the other players the tools they need to categorize you. In other words, introduce uncertainty into their metrics. Your character might be willing to kill some people, but not others. They might lie and cheat, but be truthful in strangely specific scenarios. On the flip side, they might be generally kind and generous, but their kindness and generosity fades away faster than most people you could call kind or generous. Are they kind? Are they callous? They seem to be both. And this is why understanding your character's motives is essential, because for all the incongruity, there has to be a pattern behind their actions, or else the other players will lose the trail as you seem to randomly flip-flop between positions. If you do this correctly, it will leave the other players with a lot of clues as to your true nature, but not enough to build any firm conclusions with. Tip 4. Have more than one flaw and at least one virtue. Like any game, there has to be a way to win or at least there must seem to be. Like a Sudoku puzzle, the other players must have set values that they can work from, even while the majority of the canvas is blank. Avoid absolutes, but don't be afraid to have a handful of clearly identifiable virtues and flaws. They give the other players something they can identify, and at least mostly categorize as belonging to a hero or a villain. This encourages them to stay engaged, and also forces them to reevaluate their conclusions every time you do something that challenges them, which again keeps the other players engaged, and also keeps them off balance. By trying to measure your character based only on the tip of the iceberg, they are staying actively engaged in your character and feel a need to correct their hypotheses when they feel that they are wrong. But stepping back, traditionally the writing advice you'll hear is to give each of your characters a flaw because flaws are what make characters unique, engaging, and memorable. But consider that that's the recommendation for a hero. You're not trying to make a hero, so unless your one flaw is really good, you're probably going to need more than one notable, identifiable flaw for your character, or else they're likely to be categorized as a flawed hero. In a similar vein, you need to have at least one virtue, preferably more, or else you'll look like a villain. Tip 5. Edginess does not equal ambiguity. It's entirely possible to have a character who is both edgy and ambiguous, but the two are not necessarily the same. An edgy character typically has a sad backstory and a prickly, reclusive demeanor. That can be a good start towards a gray character, but it's not enough on its own. 
Strong characters take action and make choices, and if your intent is to create a morally ambiguous character, then they must make morally ambiguous choices. A character who is sad and alone is not morally ambiguous, they are sad and alone. They are made ambiguous by what being sad and alone leads them to do and believe. Tip 6. Find a reason to follow the party. This one is essential, and it holds true for every character, but it's something that neutral and evil characters sometimes struggle with. Your character needs a reason to engage in the adventure and have a vested interest in seeing it through to the end. If your character has no reason to be on the adventure, it can lead to boredom and loss of player and character agency. It can also lead your character to becoming a destabilizing influence on the campaign that makes life hard for both the other players and the dungeon master. Knowing why your character would follow the party comes back to knowing your character's motives. Tip 7. Be an asset. You and the party may have disagreements, but at the end of the day, you need to be someone whose contributions are necessary and helpful to the team's success. Just as you need a reason to follow the party, the party needs a reason to keep you around and overlook your shortcomings for the sake of the mission. This doesn't mean that you don't have to be true to your character. As an ambiguous character, you are designed to create ripples, but be sure that you are having a net positive impact on the party goals as you do so. Tip 8. Keep your hand close to your chest. It's very hard to not talk about your characters and character ideas with other players at the table outside of game. But if you want your character to remain ambiguous in-game, you need to have restraint out of game. This isn't to say don't talk about your character at all, but be aware of the subject. Avoid talking about things like motives or explaining the rationale behind your decisions, because once a player can see behind the curtain, it'll be easier for them to understand you. This goes for in-game as well. You'll raise many questions with your actions, but you don't have to answer all of them. Answer some of them, give the players something to work with, but leave them some of the work to do for themselves. Tip 9. Gauge player opinion as you play. Again, you want to stay in that middle zone, where the other players can't categorize you. And one of the best ways to do that is to stay aware of attitudes towards your character at the table. In my experience, you can typically tell when the other players feel as if they're able to start forming an opinion on you. When you sense that, do something that will throw them off and swing you back into the Goldilocks zone. Just be sure it's something that makes sense within the context of your character. Tip 10. Don't shy away from the unpleasant. The best characters make you feel something, and that can be joy or discomfort. One requirement for playing a morally ambiguous character is going against the grain. You can't just play a character with your own morals who's just kind of rude sometimes. Remember that people like to classify things as black and white. Juxtaposing morals you agree with and those you disagree with feels uncomfortable, but makes for a very engaging character. The other players will want to figure out how exactly your character can come to believe things that they view as objectively right, while simultaneously believing things they see as objectively wrong. Tip 11. Place yourself at odds with the rest of the party. Conflict is the soul of tension, and where conflict doesn't exist, you rarely find a story worth reading. This tip is not a blank check to sow strife and disunion in the party, and in certain groups this might be a tip to ignore. But if you're confident that your group can survive a few inter-party squabbles, then have them. Do so responsibly and with respect for both the DM and the other players. But don't be afraid to take stands against the party when your character disagrees with them, especially on moral issues. This cements your character and the other players' minds as something of an other, which makes them seem less reliable and appear to be more ambiguous. You can't be a gray character if your actions never deviate from the morals of the rest of the party, unless everyone in your party is ambiguous. Be an active character, and you will be more memorable. Additionally, disagreements are an excellent example of Tip 12. Show, don't tell. The age-old writing idiom and somehow the hardest thing about the craft. I don't think I need to explain it again, I'm sure you've heard it a million times, but it's always more fun for the reader to reach their own conclusion based on the information you've provided than it is for them to be told the answer. The same holds true for D&D. Don't just tell the party you're a bastard. Show them. Tip 13. Utilize microcosm moments. 
This is another writing tip that can be applied to your play. Your character doesn't need to flee from every combat to be labeled a coward. They just need to do it once or twice when it matters. The same goes for virtues. Find key moments and use them. They don't have to be plot-critical moments either, in fact, sometimes it might be best if they're not. They just have to be moments in which you can show your character's true colors. Less is more. The other players don't want to be constantly bombarded by ambiguity, or they'll learn to tune it out. Strike at the right moments. This is especially true for character arguments. They're fun occasionally, but can get frustrating very fast if one player keeps forcing them. Tip 14. Be ready for your friends to shout at you in character. This never feels good, but you have to be ready for it. If you're playing a character that splits from the party in critical ways, in-character arguments will break out. You need to be prepared for them, and your character needs to be able to hold their own and stay true to their principles, even if they lose the argument. You don't have to admit that you're wrong, because from your perspective, you may not be. Just make sure that your dissent isn't kneecapping the rest of your party. This is another tip you should only use if you trust the other players to keep in-game conflict in-game. Tip 15. Be the villain of another story, but a hero in this one. If your character could be placed into a different story and play a villainous role, while simultaneously being able to be on the side of good in their campaign, you're doing something right. Going back again to categorization, a morally ambiguous character should be able to swing between hero and villain depending on the circumstances because they fit in neither category. A great example of this would be a character like Javert from Les Miserables. He's the villain of that story, but he could very easily be a hero in another. You want your character to be the same. Tip 16. Recognize that gray characters don't fit in every campaign. To varying extents, ambiguous characters are disruptive influences in campaigns because they complicate issues and cause party conflict, which is why they have to be played with the utmost responsibility. If you play in a group with players who take actions taken in character personally, then you might want to reconsider playing an ambiguous character, or at least design one that minimizes the confrontational elements of the type. And you should always alert your DM ahead of time that you are planning to play a character who is amoral or who could be a disrupting influence on the party. And your DM may decide that they don't want that sort of dynamic in the campaign. If that's the case, do as your DM asks. Morally ambiguous characters aren't the only interesting character type, and building a flawed hero can be just as rewarding and just as memorable. Tip 17. Deny closure. This one is optional, and it's dependent upon whether or not you want your character to remain ambiguous even after the campaign has ended. There's the temptation to wrap up characters and campaigns neatly. What was evil has been destroyed, and that which was ambiguous has been redeemed. You can go that route if you choose, but if you want to remain ambiguous to the last, you need to deny your character arc closure. That's not saying that you can't change or evolve or learn lessons. It simply means that your closing image must remain mixed. Maybe your character learned one lesson, but they still have 20 other flaws. Or maybe they claim to have learned something, but can't resist old ways. Most ambiguous characters in literature end their arcs by being revealed to be, fundamentally, either a good person or a bad person. That gives the reader closure because they're finally able to categorize the character. But some of the most enduring characters, especially from genres like film noir, are those that remain ambiguous, because those are the characters that friends can debate about and discuss and reach their own conclusions on. Tip 18. Apply these tips at your leisure. This is not an exhaustive list of how to play an ambiguous character, and nor should it be taken as an inviolate Bible. These are simply 17 strategies I've found that help create a conducive atmosphere for ambiguity. You don't need all of them, you may not need any of them, but keep them in mind, and maybe next time you make a dirty scoundrel or a corrupt nobleman, this video will help you make them a campaign highlight. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.